The Toronto Raptors come away with the win. As NBA All-Star Weekend gets underway in Toronto, the Raptors are on fire. One of the big reasons why is Masai Ujiri. He took over a troubled franchise in 2013. Guys, I'm home. I love Toronto. And quickly instilled a winning culture. But Ujiri's impact goes well beyond the bright lights of the NBA. Raised in Nigeria, he's the first African to run a major North American sports franchise. But he's never lost sight of his roots. In 2003, he founded Giants of Africa, using basketball as a tool to educate and improve the lives of young Africans. As young kids, as young youth, you have to aspire to be great. Masai returns to Africa every summer, teaching and leading the next generation. His inspiration is Nelson Mandela. I'm the father of Africa and I'm one of the millions of sons. And hosts a tribute event in Toronto every year as a way of celebrating Mandela's legacy. But today, Masai Ujiri is front and centre as the face of a franchise on the way up. I sat down with him earlier in Toronto. Masai, so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Andy. Nice to meet you. Well, it's quite exciting, this whole NBA All-Star Weekend in Toronto, in Canada. First time, right? It's unbelievable. I was super, super excited. Uh, what a great week, weekend to invite everybody to our city. I was just talking to the commissioner and when you organize uh, events uh, like this um, and you come to a city like this, it's good for your team to have maybe some kind of relevance, you know, and um, for what the team have, have tried to do the last last couple of months and our growth and we the North and uh, such a great momentum for us. And now All-Star in our city, it's, um, we can hold our breath, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. What does it mean? To you personally, I read that you used to like look at VHS copies of the All-Star Weekend back when you were a kid in Nigeria. Well, my, my coach that uh, uh, that mentored me and, and brought me up, uh, he, he and my mom did get us VHS tapes and they're always like six months late, you know, and, and he'd watch the, uh, the All-Stars with Magic Johnson and Larry Bird and all Matt, Michael Jordan and all these guys. and. Now, I mean, I'm hosting the All-Star and the reality is I have to pinch myself sometimes, you know, like because it's a dream come true. Um, I, I really appreciate the opportunity I've been given and um, I dream for more, you know, you want more and, and you want to do well and you want to do well for people, you know, and, and, and the people of Toronto. And, and so... Um, and the people of Africa, you know, and the youth around the world, you know, like to, just for them to see that, you know what, it can happen, you know, it can happen. If it can happen to me, it can happen to anybody. Your approach with your team is known as a, a, almost a special culture of focusing on, on family. Like every time someone has a baby or you have a baby, like everybody gets involved. Like what's driving that? Uh, it's, the, it's, it's that ability, I think, uh, that I think everybody in the world has is how do you put a smile on somebody's face, you know, like or um, or tell them how something is real, you know, you, you don't you don't lie to anybody, you always direct to them and and but you're always honest and good. And I think your employees want to feel it, people you work with, um, people that you work for, everybody wants to feel good about themselves every day that they come. Um, and it so goes to their own family too and yeah we have family they also have family you know like we have problems when we go home you know they have problems when they go home so um, if you treat people well I think they respect that and that's the culture we try to build and they embrace that and you see another person's baby you grab them and hug them you know like uh, that's that's our culture and it it's not fake it's not something that's manufactured you don't want that I think it's something that has to come natural and um, we're proud of it we're really really proud of it there, there seems to be something really special about the way that that you involve your teammates and and Kyle Lowry you do you you had a chat with him about like get serious about your talent, right? Mm -hmm. In our jobs, we always ask the question, what were we doing when we were 21 years old or when we were 23 years old? And if they gave me $10 million or $5 million when I was 23 years old, what would you have done? 
And I can't even say, I, can't, I don't know. And if we're put in this situation where uh, I was very popular and playing in, to in front of tons of people and now um, you have the world in your hands and you're still a young kid, um, we have to mentor them. It's professional, it's a business, it's their job, we understand that. But at the end of the day, we have to mentor these, these, these guys because um, sometimes, um, I think it's Oprah that said when you, uh, or Maya Angelou, I think she said when uh, you know better, you do better. You know, and, I, and some of these guys are going to make mistakes. Um, but look at Kyle, uh, unbelievable responsibility he has put on himself and growing from where we, he started to, that's on him, you know, like that's, that's not any of us. Yes, we will talk or we have ways to advise, but that's, on, that's, that's him who has taken responsibility and the credit should go to him. Mm. Mm. Could you fix the Leafs? <laughs> <laughs> I think Shannon is doing an unbelievable job. He's doing a great job and... and uh, it's on the way up. I know it, it doesn't, the optics is not like that now, but uh, it's coming. Every year you do a tribute here in Toronto to Nelson Mandela. You, you met him. Why, why is he such uh, an icon or a mentor of you? Meeting him was, um, was remarkable. I've never been in a room where you start to like get goosebumps as soon as a guy walks in a room and um, you f just feel a certain way. And you feel special. And I remember that day in 2006 when I met him for the first time. It's the first time I actually started feeling that we all have a responsibility. And I didn't know what my responsibility was at that, before then. As soon as I walked out of that room, I felt I have to go help other people. However, and, and you have to guide other people especially if you have the means, especially if you have the opportunity. And um, now that I do, um, I think about it every day. And, and it came from a great man who fought for a great cause. Now you have your group, uh, Giants of Africa. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a camp for a couple of weeks every summer. Is that about basketball or what is that about? Um, it started uh, being about basketball and trying to find, you know, like the next giant. Uh, uh, but after a while, you scout and scout for talent. I just started seeing that um, I looked at myself. I never played in the NBA. I was never good enough to even like be good in Europe. And but look at where sports got me. And um, if you use basketball as a tool or sports as a tool, maybe it could get you somewhere. You could become a sports journalist, you could become a sportscaster, you could become a sports scientist. You, you don't have to um, play in the NBA. And then you look, at, you look at the kids and you look at their eyes and I grew up like these kids. I grew up in Northern Nigeria, in Zaria, and I, I feel like his kids are way smarter than me. They are, they are more talented than me in basketball, you know, like why can't they have this opportunity? And that's what I wanted to create. And then the life skills. Um, you have to teach these kids, you know, like what being on time is, what treating women well is. You have to, tr you have to teach them uh, what being honest is. There's so many life skills that you can teach these kids and, and they can learn. Um, in a camp setting where they're actually doing something they love. So they're probably more attentive then and they'll listen better. And we felt this is a great time with Giants of Africa to grow and to help these kids grow and maybe create other opportunities. And it's beyond Nigeria now. Yes, uh, so we're in Ghana, uh, we're in Kenya, uh, we're in Rwanda. And next summer we're going to Botswana and Senegal added to those four countries, which is um, like, yeah, can't wait till August. This is how you spend your vacation? You're not <laughs> busy enough. Don't tell my wife, yes, <laughs> but yes, <laughs> yes, this is, this, is, this is a fun time for me because I'm going back to where I, I, I came from and uh, it's like home, it's home. This weekend, mm -hmm. All-Star Weekend, you're the, the MC, you're the, the big guy in charge, giving <laughs> the big speeches. <laughs> you nervous? Um, you know, my wife told me this morning it's the first time she's ever seen me like, uh, like nervous. Yeah, and, and 
when I get to the situations like with you, you know, I, uh, or speaking anywhere, I'm never, never nervous doing that because I can't shut my mouth. But <laughs> <laughs> um, this morning when I woke up at 5 a.m., I was nervous. You know, like I, I'll be honest, I was nervous. Um, yesterday when I woke up, I was nervous because, you know what? Um, um, Toronto lives in my heart, you know, like, and everybody is, is, is watching Toronto now and everything we do, um, we're hosting the whole world, you know, and I want us to do well. I want us to do good. That's how much I feel it, you know, so I get, I get nervous about that. I don't get nervous doing trades. I don't get nervous, you know, like doing my normal job. I don't get nervous for anything. Um, but for this, um, uh, the whole world is 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 uh, is is here, you know, and you want them to feel good. You want everybody to feel good about our great city. Well, I have a feeling you might succeed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I'm you. hoping. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks so Lovely much, Wendy. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. having me. Thank you. It's awesome.